Love them or hate them, borderless stickers are a huge point of debate in the community right now and just a huge talking point in general, and they're going to continue to be for the next coming weeks and months and probably years um, because we are really obviously now in the CS2 era and um, whether Copenhagen has bordered or borderless stickers, how well they perform, how much money they make for Valve, the teams, the players, the tournament organizers, all that stuff, and for the investors, you know, us, the little guys in the market at the end of the day is really going to impact the future of CS2 investing in a huge way. And in this video today, I want to talk about what I think right now is the biggest issue with borderless stickers uh, and, and something that investors and Valve and all these people probably need to be careful of uh, and why hopefully we're going to be getting some more bordered stickers uh, at some point in the future, if not for even the Copenhagen major. Um, of course, first, I just want to mention real quick, if you guys are looking to sell any of your CS2 items, definitely hit me up over on Twitter. Uh, it's going to be the first link in the description below. My trade link is going to be the second description, uh, second link in the description. Maybe you want to send a trade over on uh, I don't know maybe we can work out a deal uh, but I'm buying almost anything and everything whatever items you guys have uh, for between 85 and 90 percent buff I can help help you get an instant cash out an instant cash offer um, for cash crypto or whatever other payment method you're looking for maybe you need IRL money maybe you want to switch up your inventory whatever uh, I can help you get a deal done quickly you don't have to worry about getting scammed uh, anything shady anything weird anything like that uh, and of course you're helping support me my channel and my content which I would appreciate a ton with that being said let's get right into this so Borderless stickers uh, have been a huge thing the past couple of years. In the modern era, we have the modern borderless stickers. You know, the not the Cattle 14s, but the Stockholms, the Antwerps, and now most recently the Parises. And now people are wondering, hey, what is that next set going to be? Is it going to be a borderless Copenhagen? Is it going to be a borderless Shanghai? Is it going to be both? Are we just only going to see borderless stickers from here on out? Is CS2 going to bring us something new entirely? Who knows for sure. But obviously, um, there is a lot of money to be made and lost by so many different parties in this situation, as I was talking about in the intro to this video as well, um, because people made a ton of money off Stockholm. People made a ton of money off Antwerp. People haven't been able to make a ton of money off Paris just yet, but maybe they never will. Who knows? But uh, you know who did make a ton of money off Paris obviously was Valve and the teams and the players and the tournament organizers. And obviously, they are going to be a major stake uh, in this whole thing. But the question is, why did they make so much money off Paris? And I think that is the interesting thing to ask. Now, there's a lot of things going on. If you look back to the player base and the player pool at the time that Paris came out, uh, Counter-Strike was hot. Counter-Strike was the hottest that it's ever been. I mean, Paris literally came out during the peak of the CS2 mania and the peak of the CS2 hype. We are down something like 400,000 players um, from that peak in terms of like, uh, I think the average daily player base or whatever. So, uh, that alone is going to obviously give you increased and boosted sales. We're also at probably the peak of CS2 investing in CS2 hype and CS2 mania at that time. Um, you know, you can look at pretty much any item in the market and its peaks were probably uh, March, April, May, or June of 2023. And a lot of the market is still down from that point and hasn't recovered. There are some items, but whatever. People were making money, trying to make money, looking up CS investing content. Uh, and that led a lot of people to eventually investing in Paris because people had heard, hey, investing in major stickers is a great way. And obviously investing was a large part of why Paris sold so much. There's so many investors out there that have a thousand capsules, 10,000 capsules, a hundred thousand capsules, or uh, 500 hollows or a thousand hollows or 5,000 hollows or whatever. Um, that is a huge part of it. Of course, Board of the stickers, you can argue, look good. Uh, you know, Paris is for sure one of the best looking sticker sets in the whole game. Uh, we know that Board of the stickers do look good, and people are chasing after the hype stickers. And if you see hype stickers from this set, you know, you can see there was a mouse hollow. That's always going to be a banger. Um, you see Gamer Legion, unique, uh, Apex, Fnatic. You have some really cool, unique stickers uh, in this whole thing. But of course, a big problem with this and a big issue going forward is... Are we going to continue to even be able to see more and more hype and chase stickers in these sets? Because if we pull up um, the major overview for Copenhagen, we can look at right now, at the time of recording this video, there have been 16 teams. I know this says 17, but the 17 team has not happened yet. 16 teams to qualify for the Copenhagen major. And I really do believe that this is the biggest issue with borderless stickers right now, is that if we start looking through, we can see Virtus Pro already has a borderless sticker in Stockholm. G2 has three borderless stickers already. Mouse has two borderless stickers already. Cloud9 already has a borderless. Navi has three. FaZe has three. Um, Koi obviously is a new organization, a, a, a logo change, rebranding from Mavi Star Rider, so they do not have one just yet. Vitality has three. Team Spirit has two. Apex has one. Eternal Fire has one. Ents, I think, has two or three. Uh, and Heroic has three, but only one with this logo. So, of these 16 teams, only Amcall, Ecstatic, Saw, and Koi 
four of these 16 teams do not have a borderless sticker just yet. So if Copenhagen does end up being a borderless sticker set, there will only be four unique, four new unique stickers uh, from this so far. Now, obviously, you can say, hey, this is just the European qualifiers. We still have a couple more left. Well, let's start clicking through. Let's see. Hey, we still have this 17th team from Europe. What what team is this going to be? What's going on here? We can take a look at um, the European RMRs, look at the deciders, and look at the teams we have left, at least at this point. Um, by the time this video comes out, I'm sure this is already over, so we'll know. But we can see the three teams left are Gamer Legion, Guild Eagles, and Nine Pandas. Now, Nine Pandas is the, um, like the highest seed left in this thing, but um, I believe Gamer Legion is the favorite to get out of this, but hey, who knows? Any three of these teams, obviously, Nine Pandas not having to win an extra match is a big advantage for them, but uh, Gamer Legion could potentially be getting a second sticker. And, and yes, we could be getting another unique sticker in Guild Eagles or Nine Pandas or whatever, but that's great. I don't really think either of these would be like a super hype chase sticker or anything like that, but at least it would be something unique. At least it would be something different. I know Nine Pandas has some craftability, could be interesting. The Guild Eagles, it's just a pretty shit logo, pretty shit sticker. It wouldn't be exciting, but Gamer Legion is a good one. So, Gamer Legion was a hype and chase sticker from Paris, and if we end up getting a second Gamer Legion, that's going to be bad for the Paris collection, but that's also going to be bad for the Copenhagen collection as well. Okay, now we can go on over to the American RMRs, where I believe we're going to have five teams qualifying for Copenhagen, so add five more to the list, um, and you can see here, a lot of new teams and a lot of potentially unique and interesting logos, but a lot of teams who already have stickers as well. We have Furia, Complexity, Pain, uh, Imperial. I don't. I think MIBR has a borderless. I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember. You have Team Liquid. Um, and again, only five of these are going to be going. And the Americas, hey, a lot of these top teams are some of the teams that already have borderless stickers. We could be getting some new ones, but it's more than likely um, we'll only be getting at most one or two unique stickers from the American RMRs. And then finally, Asia Pacific, where I believe we only have two teams qualifying. Three of these eight teams, Mongols, Tailu, and Greyhound, already have a borderless sticker as well. So you can see here the problem with borderless stickers and the problem with having so many borderless sticker sets, and this is just basic math, there's nothing you can really do about this, is the more borderless sticker sets we get, the less unique stickers we're going to get. And also, the less chase stickers and less hype stickers because mouse is a very very hype sticker and mouse was a huge part of why stockholm was so exciting and mouse is a huge sticker in paris and people really loved it and it's part of why um you know paris sold so well because people wanted to chase after that mouse sticker they wanted to open capsules they wanted to rip them open but Will a third Mao sticker get people as excited? Will a fourth Navi sticker or a fourth G2 sticker or as these stickers get more and more common, you know, can you really even tell the difference between a Mao Stockholm and a Paris Stockholm and a Mao's, uh, no, not a Paris, a Mao's Paris and a Mao Stockholm or a Mao's Copenhagen? No, these, this is just going to be a big issue. And obviously, over time, a lot of the same teams are going to be qualifying for each major in the same year. There's going to be a lot of overlap, but of course, also, after you have four or five or six or seven or eight uh, borderless sticker sets or whatever, you're going to have so much overlap. You're going to have so many teams because there's only so many teams in the Counter-Strike world. It's not like every single year we get a bunch of new teams and a bunch of new logos and a bunch of new brands and organizations. Like, I mean, really, in theory, you want your organization to last a long time. Um, and that's just going to continue to devalue not only the, the value of the old stickers, but also your new sticker sets. So again, yes, I understand people saying, hey, Valve should make every sticker set ever borderless because they sold freaking $300 million in Paris or whatever. But again, Again, understand why Paris sold so much and understand that uh, investors did not make out of Paris well. People who want hype and chase stickers are not necessarily going to make uh, out in Copenhagen well because there's going to be so many duplicates. We can already see with the teams that are qualifying that there is so many duplicates and that this is a huge issue. And this is something um, that I think people are really underrating. Uh, and the, the sale just went on for so long. But again, so many people are trying to make money. So many people are going after Chase stickers and we're seeing so many duplicates. And like, I, I really think a borderless Copenhagen set would not even be that hyped up and exciting at this point. Um, because again, if you look at the teams that have qualified so far, which of these stickers would I be excited for? Am I going to be excited about an AM call? Am I going to be excited about a saw, a koi, um, you know, whatever, an ecstatic? Like, no, all four of these logos and stickers and teams aren't really that cool. And every other team already has a borderless sticker alternative. Now, some of them are cool. You know, hey, a new Cloud9 sticker, that's going to be cool. Mao's going to be cool, whatever. But they're not going to be as insane and they already have alternatives. And you can just go get those alternatives out there somewhere else. We already see these stickers. They're not unique. They're not interesting. And I really don't think that, um, you know, Copenhagen's going to outsell Paris or really sell anywhere near Paris if they do come out with a borderless sticker set. So I get people saying, hey, Valve, just keep this money printer going, just rack it up, whatever. Um, but you have to understand that each new borderless sticker set that we get is going to continue to devalue 
themselves and the old ones and the future ones as well. And I think investors and Valve and everyone needs to keep that in mind and just kind of understand um, that again, the more sticker sets we get, the more and more that it's going to be harder to get unique, interesting, fun, fresh stickers. Uh, and also investors are getting hurt in the process. And uh, obviously I'm not saying anyone should give a shit about investors. They really shouldn't, but I'm just saying investors are some percent of the people who helped Paris get to the heights that it got to obviously. Uh, and even people who just want some good stickers or fun stickers or whatever um, is a fourth G2 sticker, really that fun or that exciting, a fourth borderless G2 sticker. I don't really think so. Um, but again, that's just the nature of the beast. That's just the way that the math works is like the more and more borderless sticker sets we get, the more and more overlap and the less unique stickers we're going to get as we go on. And that's not really going to be that fun, fresh and exciting anymore. So I don't know, just kind of keep that in mind. I just got kind of depressed as I was looking at the teams that have qualified for Copenhagen so far. And I was really like, damn, this is not going to be an exciting borderless sticker set. So I don't know. Let's we'll wait and see what happens. But that's pretty much it for this video today, guys. Hopefully catching the next one. Until then. Peace.